agriculture, so many things are dying out and we've got so little to hold on to and Morris dancing is one of those things that goes back hundreds of years. I'm undertaking a journey from Olympia in Greece uh, all the way to the Olympic Games opening ceremony in London. I hope that my humble effort has a little bit of the Olympic feel to it. I think I could have Morris danced the entire 2,000 mile journey. Um, Perhaps a little bit of support and um, a bit more time uh, to be able to do it comfortably. I really enjoyed dancing through Greece. I got a fantastic reception there. It was very much like being in England with lots of people waving and cheering. And coming into France, I've had a really good reaction too. Last night, I was underneath the motorway bridge hiding from a thunderstorm, eating cold beans, uh, questioning, is it really worth it? But then when I get to cycle into the city and dance in the city, the feel of elevation I get. And when I see a smile on someone's face, it's, it's definitely worth it. I don't have a woman waiting for me at home. I'm not sure that a woman would let me go on this adventure, so um, I'm staying free and enjoying it at the moment. On the 27th of April, a uh, dispersal zone was created for an area that surrounds the Stratford Town Centre. If there's more than two people together at any particular point, police and police and community support officers can uh, demand that people disperse. What the dispersal zone does is exactly the same as the powers of stop and search. It's about stigmatising people. It's making an assumption that everybody who is of a certain age is likely to be causing some sort of nuisance to the visitors that are turning up here. It's based on a fear of young people. It's based on an assumption that everybody is up to no good. There's also a power that if you're under 16 and uh, you're out after nine o'clock at night, and with the bearing in mind we're talking about the summer, you can be picked up by the police and effectively what it's done is created a curfew for anybody under the age of 16 between the hours of 9 and 6 anywhere around this site. The idea there is good, like to keep everyone safe, I can, I can respect that, but the whole fact that without any reason like you look suspicious so I have to remove you from the whole, the whole borough, that's a bit extreme. Olympics is only happening now and we've been hanging around there for time. We're happy that tourists are coming yeah. and they have the right to be here, but we also have our rights to hang around with friends and have fun. A lot of young people are not prepared to put up with just being told what to do, forcing people into a situation where they get into conflict with the police and the inevitable consequence of that is they end up being criminalised. People end up in court. We should have a right to be around where we live and hang around our area. Do Londoners feel safer when they're walking through the streets and they suddenly find armed police with big guns? I mean, not in a country that rather prides itself in having an unarmed police force. However, we are already the most surveyed society. We've now got drones coming in over the sky. You know, the sounds of military helicopters. Do we really want to be living in a kind of Ridley Scott wet dream? Well, starting from tomorrow, there's going to be armed police at my door, uh, ten, 10 soldiers stationed 24-7 at the end of the corridor, and uh, a battery of missiles on the roof of the water tower above my apartment. If you look out from the Olympic site, the first thing you see is my building on the roof of that water tower. Maybe if you see missiles on the top of that, maybe you'll feel safe. If the MOD comes out and says, look, we're putting missiles on the roof of people's houses, you know, it makes it look like they're really serious about security. But I think the proper work of, you know, keeping the Olympics safe is done elsewhere. Those missiles are just for show. Behind me, we have the uh, Rapier air defense missile system. Four of those will be deployed on exercise Olympic Guardian. There is no specific threat against the Olympics in terms of an air threat. This is purely a contingency, but obviously we, we need to prepare for if that order does come. 
overall security for the Olympic Park has increased from around about 4,000 to somewhere like 23,000, which includes G4S, the police, the army in uniform, and then all the other security from private sponsors, 500 FBI agents coming over with the team from the US. It's a complete overkill for what is a sporting event. The security is predominantly about defending the interests of the money that's gone into the Olympics. G4S, you can't hide. We charge you with apartheid. G4S, you can't hide. We charge you with apartheid. G4S. There's lots of lovely things said about the Olympics. But if you're hiring a company to provide the security that's involved in supporting Israeli apartheid, it's involved in exploiting prisoners in the UK, it's killed asylum seekers and immigrants in the UK, then I think that's really undermining the message of the Olympics. In the case of Jimmy Mubinga, the officers deporting him uh, pushed his head down, kept him in a position where he asphyxiated. and. Um, G4S claimed that they'd done nothing wrong, but even their own employees came forward saying that they were doing this all the time. It's very violent and basically murderous procedures. No sane person could be against the idea of the Olympics. Anything which brings, you know, prosperity and you know, and vitality and activity you know, to, to London is is obviously a good thing. However, that said, if you are a fastidious aesthete, which is one of the, one of the several definitions I apply to myself, if you are a fastidious um, aesthete, you can only be uh, you can only be appalled at the sort of brainless detritus which the Olympics generate. I was recently described as a ubiquitous know-it-all. I'm, I'm an author and journalist, but I, in the past I was responsible for making London's design museum and was briefly, hilariously and catastrophically uh, the creative director of the Millennium Dome. And that gave me special insights into um, politicised projects, which would often end in disaster. I'm an expert on those. And what's deplorable about uh, the Olympic merchandise and the uh, terrible graphics going with it, it assumes a very low level of intelligence amongst the public. And I think that's, that, that is really despicable. Look upon my works, ye mighty, and despair. I think the idea that the mascots are there to excite younger children reveals the deplorable ignorance of how intelligent and sensitive young children are. I mean, young children are not moronic. But I think the organising, I think some parts of the Olympic organising committee probably are moronic. How is the person who consumes this bit of tat going to be changed or enhanced by possession of it? It's ugly, it's cynical, and it's stupid. Several design principles have been violated here. This is a ugly travesty. Mindless, stupid, cynical, patronising, exploitative, manipulative, ugly and useless. We want to revive our industry and revive the credibility of our great nation by putting something like this for sale. I mean, what purpose is this meant to serve? It's, it, it's, it's, not even, it's not even, it's not a clever photograph. And it shows this sort of, you know, laborious conceit of the London Eye as, um, um, as a target. Given the ever-present threat of terrorist activity, that seems to me to be a, you know, an, an, un, you know, an unfortunate lapse of taste. But I think Al-Qaeda is probably too, um, I think their aesthetics are too advanced to take much interest in this sort of thing. The local Olympic organisers seem to think that the, you know, the public has absolutely no appetite for thoughtful speculation about what the Olympics might be, about what competition might mean, about the nature of sport, the nature of participative activity, you know, the symbolic importance of the games in a, in a, in a, in a, in a modern culture. Instead, what the public, they think, needs is distorted, debased smurfs, which you can hang on key rings. Appalling. I would say I'm a pinhead, you know. <laughs> I've been called a pinhead, yes. It's more than just collecting pins. It breaks down barriers. It makes it easy for people to meet each other. This is now the eighth meet that we've had. For me, the pins are a tangible memento. This has really taken over my life. The reason I love this logo, one, it's very, very distinctive. Two, it's created absolutely amazing level of discussion over it. I think when it first came out, we all said, oh, what's that? You know, that's not a great look. Over time, we've come to accept it a lot more. Given what we have in the marketplace, I think our logo is pretty good. It's going to become the biggest global brand this year because of the London 2012 Olympic Games.